Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm getting set up here to start my next repair job and what you have in front of you here is a clutch shaft out of what I believe is a Colchester lathe. Belongs to one of my viewers, his name is Earl, and uh, he contacted me via email and asked me if uh, I would be interested in helping him repair this shaft. What he's got is on both ends of this shaft is actually worn. This side here is worn badly. And uh, this side here has got a little groove war in it. We'll talk about that one in a minute. So let's, uh, let's talk about this end first. What we need to do is repair, build up this end of the shaft right here. This is supposed to be um, 35 millimeter and it's worn like 15 thousandths undersized. It almost looks to me like someone at some point turned it because it looks pretty uniform even though somebody's been uh, grinding on it. Earl said that he did not do this. This, this was a uh, used lathe purchase that he made and going through the lathe and trying to fix it. This is what he discovered was wrong. So you've got a badly worn journal here that the uh, that a hub goes on to. You have a 10 millimeter keyway here that is stretched and he did say the hub that was on this end was running loose. Okay so this is all wore out. Right here next to it, you have a bearing journal that is badly worn out. This is for a 6207 bearing. Got just a little bit of wear on that shoulder there, I believe as well. So this was the uh, main culprit right here that needed to be fixed. And he had, what he had asked me originally was, uh, you know, do you want to spray weld this? And uh, without seeing pictures, I said, yeah, I'm sure if it's a bearing fit, we can, we can spray that and get it repaired. But the fact that the entire end of the shaft is actually worn undersized, it needs to be repaired, including the key. This is not gonna be a spray weld or flame spray repair for this end of the shaft right here. I believe what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set up my uh, MIG welder with the solid wire and go ahead and weld this entire end of the shaft up here, including the key. We'll actually start with the key and go ahead and weld that in nice and solid. And then we will go ahead and build up the entire rest of the shaft here and then turn it back to size. So I've already, I've already been uh, getting my drawing in line right here. A lot of you metric guys are probably gonna be happy about this one because we've got mostly metric dimensions for everything written down here. And because I work an inch and all my machines work an inch and all my tools are inch, I convert everything over to inch. So I also have inch dimensions on here to reference between the two uh, sizes, okay? But we've got our links there written where we need. Uh, 10 millimeter by four millimeter keyway, 63 millimeters long. And then this, uh, this fit right here, this 35 millimeter fit is gonna be 63 millimeters long there as well. And then we will size it accordingly for this right here for just enough clearance for the ball bearing to just slide over that. And then this area here, which is gonna be 18 millimeters, that is gonna be your actual bearing fit where that'll, that'll need to be to the proper size and I have that. Uh, I've actually got it written down there. 1.3785 is your maximum size on your fit. So you have a tolerance there and, I'm, and it should be 1.3781 to 1.3785. That's gonna be your tolerance. So about four tenths is gonna be your tolerance on your bearing fit. All right, so that's uh, this end. Let's flip it around and I'll show you this end right here. This is the side that the clutch actually rides on on the shaft. And there is a Torrington bearing, I believe, that rides here on this journal. The journal itself isn't really bad. I measured it out and we've actually got this side uh, drawn out there as well because we have a snap ring groove on that end. Really the only problem that he wanted repaired is that there is a uh, thrust bearing that runs between the clutch here and the bearing here. And he says the, the thrust bearing is what's worn this groove in there. So it makes it so that it kind of moves around. So he asked if I would repair that. But what I'm going to end up doing, we're going to flame spray this in. We'll go behind the snap ring groove just to where this groove cleans up right there because this is a one inch journal actually right here. So we'll just, uh, we'll just fix this one area right there, build it up. This is going to be 25 millimeters. In, uh, in your size right there. And this is actually for a 16005 bearing is what fits on this end. And that should be the same size uh, ID for the thrust bearing there as well. All right, so 
Um, that's the job at hand. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to get my welder set up, my positioner, and we'll start with this end right here and get it, getting it all welded up. I'm going to give the shaft a coating with this weld aid heavy duty anti spatter just for the areas that we're not going to be welding on. That'll help protect those from those areas from weld spatter sticking on, on it. And for the cup here for the MIG gun, I'm going to coat it down with the weld aid uh, nozzle clean. I've been getting the uh, AC Precision welding position set up here. Got this piece of 1045 chrome stock that I used as a, just a, a sample setup piece and uh, got the end welded. That way I could get the Millermatic. We're using the Millermatic 251. I've got it set at right around 250 wire speed and 18 volts and it seems to be doing a good job right there. We've got our uh, rotation. I think I've got the rotation set pretty good right about there. So we should be good to go. Take this out, we'll put the shaft in and get it start, start getting it welded up. We'll start with the keyway first and then we'll go around the shaft and get it welded up. There's you a little better look at what the buildup looks like. It started getting really hot on the end. The shaft actually turns red, it gets so hot. So you gotta stop and kind of let it cool down some. And it just starts looking like, you know, junk out there on the end whenever you're building it up. But it's all gonna be turned down. Not this one, of course, but this is a sample of what we're doing, what we're about to do. So I got the shaft turned about 45 degrees. I like to try to get those corners to where it's in a nice flat position and lay that wire right in that corner. Try to build that up nice and then I'll rotate it the other way, do the same thing, and just try to get the keyway built up nice, and then we'll go around and uh, weld it up. And I'll probably start on the end here, once we start our OD build up, weld on the end since it'll, the shaft will be, still be relatively cold at that point, and instead of starting here, and the shaft continue to get hotter and hotter as we get out here, making this harder to build up. When it gets red hot like that, it's just really hard to build up consistently and uniformly. So run a bead here while it's kind of cool and then start on the other end there. That's from the inside of that hole. I did wash this thing, but I didn't, you know, I washed the inside of the hole out, but I didn't get in there with anything except for the, uh, the cleaner. So whatever's in there is gonna try to bake out while we're, while we're getting it hot. So that side welded in pretty nicely there. Got one little spot there on the end, I want to kind of touch it up. The keyway should be built up good enough when whenever we go around, it'll fill in what's left there on the corners. Looks pretty good. I need to, I did kind of move away from it in a couple of spots. So I'm going to have to just kind of touch up the very corner right by the chamfer. All right, I'm going to come in here and lay this on top of that shoulder there as well. So don't forget that I've already got all of my measurements I need. I know what the shoulder length is and all the diameters. So make sure you do that first before you weld these up or else you won't know where to turn it back to.
See how we're looking so far. I think that's looking nice. Before I go any further with that, I'm gonna come down here and make sure I spot this in and get these little low spots that I missed before it gets too hot. And then we'll uh, continue our build up there. So it's working out good. Settings I got. That's why I like to start with a test piece. That way I can get all my perimeters set and I'm not doing it on the actual workpiece. get to where sometimes my glasses start fogging up and then it's hard to focus on where you're at. I have to just kind of stop and regroup here. There's our completed buildup. I'm happy with the results. It looks good. I think we're gonna have a good, a good shaft to turn the size there. Gonna let it continue to cool before we move on to the lathe. All right, guys, we're ready to start turning the end of our shaft there. Our buildup looks pretty good. I think that's going to work out nicely. Our weld aid any spatter did a good job protecting this uh, this bearing surface right here from any spatter sticking to it. All we got to do is just clean that up, just wipe it off. It'll all come clean, and then we'll give we'll give these other surfaces a nice polish whenever we're in the lathe there. Once we get it finished up, so we'll head down to the lathe and start turning this guy. We've got the shaft chucked into the uh, six jaw chuck right here. And just giving it a little check, I'm gonna try to hide some of that reflection there. Got a half a thousandth run out right there. Good to go, just where it's at. I've got some new turning tools and some carbide inserts in the shop here. And I picked these up primarily to be used with the new Precision Matthews lathe. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start running some test cuts with these guys here in the shop on some jobs that I have and seeing how the, uh, the Walter Carbide uh, works for me. So we have a right and a left. These are the DC LNR and DC LNL turning tools, just so your basic turning tools, uh, three quarter inch shank and CNMG 400 size of insert. And they do come with the, uh, the wrenches there as well. So we have three packs of inserts right here. And what we have is a, uh, we have the 10, 20, and 30 in the uh, Walter designation. So the WPP 20, let's see, here's the, uh, this is the 10, and then you have the 20. So the 10 uh, with the FP5 chip breaker, this is going to be more in line for uh, finishing. The 20, this is going to be sort of your middle of the road, medium to uh, finish machining right here, okay? Uh, MP3 is the chip breaker and then we have the 30 right here the WPP 30 G and an RP7 chip breaker now these are going to be tough and more in line for uh, heavy turning and whenever you need some toughness there like interrupted cuts and things like that and uh, they are all made in Germany so uh, German made engineered tools right here here's a little better look at the um, at the 30 for uh, heavy cutting, this one's your medium machining right here, the number 20, and then your 10, so for your uh, finishing ops right there, and the uh, light, light cutting. 
So looking forward to having these and giving them a try. I've got some weld buildup that I'm going to be turning uh, with these guys. We'll probably start with uh, this insert right here, the, the 30, WPP30, and uh, give that a try and see how it holds up for the, uh, for the weld buildup and then maybe finish it out with this guy right there. So uh, new tools for me to try out and uh, see how they work. I look forward to having them and a welcome addition for the new Precision Matthews lathe. We'll get this end face uh, just cleaned up there. And I think what we'll do is go ahead and tool a new 60 degree center in there to help support this for the turning. do is come in here to an, uh, an existing face and just touch it all right I'm gonna go ahead and set a zero I'll know where to come that back into to touch that original face there Got about 20 thousandths got our 48 millimeter uh, that's going to be our basically our shoulder between the bearing fit and the shaft fit there although they're basically the same size but there is going to be a slight step there but I want to finish this size first and then move on over here to this side to do uh, the bearing fit. This is going to be the uh, finished pass for this first journal right here. We've got 11,000, so we're going to be removing. Uh, that should give me, I'm, I'm shooting for about a half a thousandth to, to uh, be able to polish it down. And I'm also using some very light cutting oil on this to help try to improve the surface finish as we make this finished pass here. <laughs>
gonna give it a uh, check with the mic here. 1.380, so that's right where we want it to be. All right, everything's working out pretty good. We got this uh, shiny spot here, which is, uh, whenever you get these sort of inconsistent finishes, that's real typical with weld buildup right there. Uh, but we've got a couple of tents right here that I can go in there and just kind of polish this down. We have about a tenth larger on this end of the shaft, actually. So we'll polish this down a little bit and just got to kind of blend that to uh, kind of match an exact 35 millimeter uh, journal. So all I got left is this little journal right here. This is the actual bearing journal, and it's going to be slightly larger than this. So I'm going to be making it to a specific fit, leaving it a few tenths oversized so that we can polish this down to... Um, your maximum tolerance on your, I think it was the uh, 6207 bearing. All right. Should be my finished cut on this bearing journal. All right, 380. So that's going to give me a thousandths and a half to uh, polish this down. I usually try to give myself anywhere from a half to uh, one thousandths on our polish right there. So we actually got about a thousandths and a half that, that we can polish that down. So that's what we'll do. I'll use a file to get it close and then uh, an emery cloth to kind of finish it out. So um, besides the chamfer and some polishing, this, this Shaft is about on size and just about ready. Whenever you go to finish it, you got them cutting holes on there. I just use some of this degreaser like that to really easily just kind of wash that off. It dries instantly just takes the oil and just drips it right down in there to the chip pan and it instantly dries. Now you're ready to go with your files and your emery cloth. I hit this in so close to the finished size that I don't think that those tool marks are going to clean up in there. We're wearing it on tents now, so yeah, I'm I'm there on the journal size for 35 millimeter. Don't need to go any smaller right there. So now we just got to focus on this uh, bearing journal there. 1.3785 was my target. Looks like we landed on 378.4. I just wanted to point out that I am running a tap through the center hole to half 13 just to uh, clean it up. It is taking a little bit out of there. 
I'm sure that hole shrunk up a little bit after all that welding. I think that's about at the bottom there. Still a good fit. All right, guys, so this end of the uh, clutch shaft is now uh, completed as far as the turning. We still need to mill the 10 millimeter keyway in there. Uh, we're just gonna do that last after I finished all the lathe work there. So it turned out nice. We've got our uh, 6207 bearing fit is a uh, spot on for what it needs to be. And then our 35 millimeter shaft fit, this is good too. I would have loved to have cleaned these tool marks up a little bit more, but I just didn't leave enough material on there to uh, give it a more high polished finish, but the fit is good. So it's gonna fit just like it's supposed to. So next uh, phase of the repair is this end here. And again, really the only thing we gotta fix is this groove right there. So this is gonna be a great repair for my eutectic uh, flame spray method. So I'm gonna use that. That way we don't even have to worry about the snap ring groove uh, being in the way or filling it up. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go from the edge of where the worn groove is all the way right next to the snap ring groove. We'll do an undercut and then a flame spray buildup using my eutectic and we're gonna be using the uh, 21022 powder. That's my go-to powder for shaft fits. So let's go ahead and jump on that next.